had no idea this was a feature. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, I can't even beatbox, but yes. <laughs> What's going on? Damn it! I I don't know why. I, I've been doing this shit for years. I don't know why I always hit the wrong damn garage door. Anyway, yes. All right, so I decided I'm gonna do some more work on the Integra, on the Tig, as you all should know. Boop boo. Bing. Tig. So anyway, uh, if you didn't see the latest episode, you should watch it. That was the hood dampener. Growing to actually like them. If I could just get my hood popped here. I like that effect, that touch. It's nice. Still haven't taken that out. I don't think I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna leave it. But I do like what the hood dampener offers. It's a good kit. I just question how long they can actually stay in service. You know, like most dampeners do go out after some years and then the hood just drops on your fucking head and that's a problem so but today we are going to tend to some of the issues with the ecu so if you're also not familiar with the episode of the bluetooth issue we had hooking up to the wireware cluster uh bluetooth kept dropping in and out in and out so after going through things with hondata with wireware hondata comes up and finds out this is the issue all right, so Bluetooth is funny. Uh, you already got it inside an ECU. Then you got this metal plate on top of it. Then you got the kick panel on top of it. And then the clusters in the dash, that's a lot of interference. So Honda was like, let's remove this, see what we get, and presto. Better connection, uh, have yet to experience any drops. Also have the EC, the cluster back after getting some updates. That's down there. We're not doing that today though. I don't think we are. So now I've ordered, Pond data sent in the part. Boom, the new cover. All right, new cover. We're gonna put that on. We're also gonna try to make some modifications to the kick panel to add a little nice cosmetic look, but also functional for a reason, and we'll get into that. And I'm debating adding a little bit of accent to that area. So that is what we're gonna try to get into today. How much of it is actually gonna get done? How much am I actually gonna really like to do this and that? I don't know yet. We're gonna get into it and see, but we are gonna make the adjustments to the cover. We are gonna try to make the adjustments to the kick panel. Went out to the junkyard and actually picked this baby up because I don't wanna fuck up the one that's in there. That way I can put it back in there if this doesn't work out. So let's get into it. All right, so right here, let's get this new panel out. This is the old Honda. Uh, as you can see, Wolfpack, V20, V Tech and Tech. Thank you, terrible. And let's get this thing out of here. All right, to... All right, there we go. Plexiglass, Honda etched, new ECU cover. This should be way better than this metal plate being on top of the Bluetooth and the chip, causing a lot of interference to this. But we're not gonna stop here. Uh, as you see here on the back of the old OEM cover, you don't have these indentions. Come to find out, I had asked Honda when receiving this, what the hell are these for? These are the standoffs. And you may not need these for this reason. Your ECU might already have them. So let's take a look at that. So we got all the stuff down here. Oh, shh. all the stuff down here from the cluster. So let's get this up in the seat over here. Steering wheel is the kick panel. But damn, I need to put a light on the subject maybe. So let's put a light down there. As you can see, you already have your standoffs right there on the uh, Honda unit that's in there. So you probably won't need those. We're just gonna go ahead, install the cover using the four screws and that should be it. Then we're gonna make our adjustments to the kick panel. But what I'm going to do is actually get a light to, you know, brighten up this subject. So cool, let's get this prepared. So, so technically I could just peel this off after we put it on, but then again, when I put the screws on, that'd be an issue and it'll hold that down. So we're just gonna go ahead and peel this nice little cover back. It's a pain in the, pain in the ass. There we go. All right, uh, one corner exposed. And you know what? I'm just gonna pull this shit off. I'll just wipe it down. I'm really not feeling. Let's just take the whole damn thing off. We can wipe it down. It's not that big of a deal. Just try to handle it as much as possible. If 
from the edges. Do your best. And there we go. All right, so there we go. Got that. This screw got stripped and we had to extract it. So that's no longer any good. So we have three good ones plus this center one that we can use. And we're not using this cover anymore. So let's just cut that sticker, pull this center one out. Now we have our fourth. All right, now we have our four screws and our cover. Let's put it in. Got our cover. So with these being like this, we're gonna go ahead. Honda will be upside down. We don't wanna put anything in there we don't need to. Put our screws right here and get this situated for the standoffs to kind of pretty much uh we still got a little paper right there that's ugly that was actually oh that's a piece of the plexiglass that was still in there what we do slide that up get the standoffs set into the indentions which they are hand power we don't need anything too tight All right, there we go. All right, everything snugged up. That actually looks good. See-through, okay? So that's nice, the plexiglass look right there, voila. Now that we got the cover on, let's get to the point of what I just said. So, this camera fixed. So, we got a nice ECU cover from Honda, right? Yes. It's going to fix, hopefully, our issue of interference from the metal cover. That's what we're hoping. I honestly do think that that's going to be the case. Plexiglass and metal do provide two different type of boundaries. Put this phone up here. But the thing is, now that we have this nice plexiglass etched cover, we put this kick panel over, nobody can see it. I mean, nothing, absolutely nothing. Wouldn't it be good if we highlighted that area just a little bit? So this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to take these kick panels keep this one i'm going to take this one and try to window cut it out so that the honda chip will show because if you're not familiar if you've never opened up your honda cover the chip actually does have green indicator lights on it that blink and flash showing transference of data or whatever the fuck might be going on so with that being the case if we can window this out nicely that actually will look pretty cool especially at night seeing that window honda chip with the green lights blinking and flashing. So that's what we're gonna to try to do to this panel. We're gonna to try to window it out. So we need to try to kind of fit it in there, see where about the chip is, cut that portion out, get something that's referencely close to that and uh, make us a stencil, then see how we're gonna cut it out. Then I also have the stuff to go ahead and kind of freshen this up if need be, and we'll do that. Then we'll install it, boom, see how that goes. That's what's next. Okay, so after taking some feel measurements that means i just kind of put this panel up here felt where the ecu was if you can see i have used my finger to make a clean mark basically where that ecu was running and straight up it doesn't sit in there exactly square with this panel it's kind of funny you would think the corner would come here and here but it doesn't so we're going to use the cover to mimic this portion and i'm thinking that the ecu sits in here about like that honestly this is about you can't even see the air bottom edge of the ECU. Uh, I think it's riding about right here. Then the chip sits about right here. So I'm thinking that this, we're going to use this as the edge of the ECU. I'm using a pencil so we can erase that. This part being the bottom part of the ECU. Give us some guesstimates. Now we might not be square dead on when this is all said and done, but I'm believing that this window should be close to where I'm gonna put it, all right? So that's what we're working with. We don't need to worry about all this other stuff. And then I've come up with this package of panel nails is about roughly the same width and, di width and height or length of the Honda chip. And I know that from the edge of the ECU, it sits about right here, all right? So I'm thinking that if we put this right here, line it straight and I'd say about this. Make sure that's straight right there. So that was on a good one. Right there. Cut this pattern out. All right, we're gonna cut this out. We should definitely have enough of the window in here 
cut it out we don't want to scar the surface too much because we don't want to do a lot of you know fixing work so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to take a tool go down and bore these until i hit these as corners that'll give me the rounded corner then i'm going to have to try to use a jigsaw of some sort and with a very fine blade so i don't kill the plastic and run it up and then we'll of course probably have to go ahead do a little sanding to smooth that out clean this panel up if we have to refresh it then we'll have to do that as well but let's go ahead and get into this so i'm thinking this tool is my best bet hand tools uh, i want to try to eliminate as much power tool because i don't want to damage this so i'll basically just kind of come here decide where i will start from these corners until it rounds out big enough and I hit that corner and then hit this corner and then that should be good enough and then I'll just cut up into that with however we decide later so I'll just take this do this until and that's it so I'm gonna do the rest of these like this one and then that'll be that part then we'll go ahead and put our blade in there run it over run it down this all should fall out and then we might have to clean up the edges here and there so we got our four holes no it's not perfect but like i said it doesn't have to be the main thing is when we cut these out can we get something of a nice relevant rectangle window in there without it looking too jacked that's the point so now let me find something what I'm going to use to kind of cut from this edge to this edge and then I'm going to be eyeballing it. I don't have anything that's going to act as a straight edge when I run this blade unless I can come up with something to hold this down and then cut into it and line those up. But we'll see what we come up with. So legitimately, this blade says it's for plastic. That setting says it's for plastic. I'm going to try to use this. This could turn out horrible. So no, uh, I think I'm just going to focus on getting this done not recording and do, doing this shit because i'm a little hesitant and we'll see how it goes so i'll get back to you all right not as bad as i thought it was going to be not as great as i thought it was going to be now we got a little cleanup work to clean up these edges make these meet make these flush now it's time to get the sanding tool out and take care of that all right so what i'm going to do is take the dremel with the sanding bit I um, use tape to kind of mark off my edges. That way when I run into the tape, I know I'm pretty much close to that line. And we're gonna try to clean these up. And if we have to, then we'll go into hand sanding. It's a little bit more material here that might take a lot more time to take off by hand sanding. Uh, if you look from the back side, it's really not too bad. And then we'll put the sanding block on there and try to get a little bit more uh, imperfections knocked out. Now we'll go on here with this block sand some of this stuff off especially the plastic kind of molted and melted then we'll go ahead and pull the tape off and then there's our window it won't be perfect but as to this type of job doing it at home in your garage wherever and then actually damn our light went out but whatever then actually put it in there it sits such up in the area where those small imperfections although if you really are headstrong on knocking them out that's good you should be I probably will go back at a later date. I might even have this sent off somewhere once I kind of get this one made up and let a company that I look for or research to do a little bit better job, uh, possibly even a fiberglass job if I'm really that serious about it. But it sits so far up in an area where those imperfections really won't be seen. Uh, the, hopefully the illumination of the ECU and maybe the other things we do will complement the area and it will be a good, good job and nicely recognized. So let's keep this going I'm gonna sand these off get this imperfection out pull this tape see what we got I think our window is a little abstract maybe not so squared as having to try to fix some of the rounded corners but I think it might be all right so we're gonna go ahead and pull the tape and get ready to clean the panel and see what all we might have to do if we might have to go ahead and kind of refurbish it with the uh interior covering or interior paint and go from there like this one came out the junkyard so i'm hoping i can clean it up right now with some good dawn and get all the dirt off of it and then come back off and then just kind of moisturize it and see if it'll kind of bring uh some of that freshness out of it if not then i have to go back wash it again with dawn degrease it with the uh 
with the cleaner and then let it sit and then we're gonna have to do a spray job and that'll take us a little bit longer. So let's see what we get from this. And there we go. That is not too bad, ladies and gents. That is not too bad at all. Like I said, a little bit uh, different there, but I don't think that's too bad at all. So now I'm gonna try to clean it up and see if we can't freshen it up. Then let's put it in there and see how it looks. Voila, and there it is, the panel with some nice TLC. Very nice. No need to have to recover, spray. Cleaned it real good with Dawn, got as much as that grit and dirt out of there, and then went ahead and conditioned it and moisturized it, and that looks good. OEM panel brought back to life. Now let's go ahead and slide that thing in here and see if we can even see the Honda at ECU. <clears throat> Get the panel fitted in and see if we can see the Honda at ECU through the window. That is what we are hoping for. And there we go, it's a nice additive. So we're not done there, let's continue on to the rest of the project. <clears throat> Had to give me some lunch, I gotta eat. So the next portion of this that is supposed to take place I don't even know why I did that. I'm originally from Texas, but I don't talk nearly that country. But anyway, next portion. This is supposed to take place in this here. Probably the toothpick. It's probably the toothpick making me do that shit. It does kind of make you feel a little country. But anyway, I'm gonna try to add some illumination lighting. Got this kit. Uh, it is a cigarette lighter plug-in kit, which is fucking horrible if you're actually gonna use it that way. I would not recommend it. Uh, you know, that could be a little trashy. So this is an on and off button right here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is take this out of here, uh, shave this back, use the wiring only, get rid of this plug here that I don't need and tap into the lighter section is what I'm gonna do and run this in behind the dash, accent the floorboard and possibly under the seats is what I'm going for. First portion of this is we're gonna go have to take that console portion out and i'm gonna tap into the lighter which i still have here but i don't use it because i don't smoke so that will still be there we'll tap into the back half run the rest of the wiring around there uh put the lighting up in here to accent the floorboard on this and that side which will also add to the window cut we just did and then we will place the other two under the seats and you will see illumination from under each seat and that is the game plan so now it is time to try to get that shit lined out so let's get this kit out of the box see what we're dealing with see what we're going to cut what we're not going to use what we are going to use what we might have to modify and then go from there we already spread this out here is the controller that's going to go in there we'll find a nice place to mount this where it's out of the way here is the power adapter so instead of just cutting these wires off down here, because if I'm not mistaken, I'm not an electronic guru, but I think LED and diodes have a certain way you have to have positive, positive, negative, negative. It's not like something that's regular DC, if I'm not mistaken, but if I am taking the extra measures to be careful, what will be okay. So I know for a fact that these are the grounds, this is the positive in there. So I wanna see which wires are that. So when I bridge them in, I bridge them out in accordingly. Separate it, and there you go. So, mm -hmm. that's what you got. So luckily they color coded these. We'll use that, extend them, and go from there. So we're good on that. Out here, went ahead, took these wires off of the board, snipped them. I am going to take the fuse. I had one of these laying around, so I will take I took the fuse that came with the kit, put that fuse in here, and I'll go ahead and wire this in to here so we will have that fuse in line to protect the entire system. While the soldering iron is heating up, we're gonna go ahead and get this out of here. So let's get this light on so you all can see what I got going on here. Attempting to do is to get 
back in here pull this out so that i can access the actual thing there are two screws in here so i should be able to restart with this and yep i got the screws out now this comes out like this i'm gonna go ahead and check the voltage as well and of course look for 12 volts i like to use one of these alligator clips just to clip on my ground and then i'll use the probe to go around and look for hots and there's no voltage there right now so now i'll put the key in turn the auxiliary on and there we go now we got 12 volts so at least now i know this is a constant when the, this is not a constant when the car is off but when the car is on it will be powered up and the there's no actuation or closed loop would happen to have the lighter button pressed in so that's a go i'm going to find out how i'm going to bridge into here i kind of like the fact that this exposed i might clean this up a bit and see if i can just heat up these terminals good enough to get a good solder connection and then just use that instead of actually cutting the wire shelding back and then bridging into it that way that'd be a little cleaner On there to feed the solder from the top make sure it flows through the wires and there we go that's about all we need now just feed this heat shrink over and there it is and there we go nice connection protect it Boom. let's go over this part although i didn't film it all it's really not that important important you can find a way to do it however you like i'm just going to briefly show you how i did it so what i did was find me a piece of air fitting hose this way i could feed the end of the wire that is exposed into the cavity of this hose and tape it together also makes it easier to pull apart i don't like to put tape on the actual wire that I already exposed because then it might compromise the solder job. Then line of sight, I just used it, snaked it through there from this side where I want my switch to run. And then the rest is gonna be what it is. Came with a pack of screws, which we're not gonna use. I'm not screwing into my dash. I'm not doing that any more than it probably may have already been done, but no, not that. And it came with our good old solid trusty zip ties, which we're gonna be using. So now that that's done it's snaked through i'm gonna go ahead and get in here find out how i'm gonna wire it in get it all wired then before we start buttoning snaking light light bars we're gonna cut power on test make sure everything cuts on stays on like it should run through the options on the controller because it has quite a bit of color options and then after that has checked through now it's time to go ahead and get everything installed in place clean up get everything put back in see what the final pro product looks like all right so i like using oem parts during the modification so this piece actually goes on the back of the positive side wires for the lighter there was one hole in here for the wire to feed through so what i did is i and you got to be careful if you solder there because that other terminal that's on there is actually soldered so when i soldered on there the other terminal came off but i put another hole in here using this for the second wire so it can come through the oem basically protector as well so some of this was a pain in the ass when I soldered the connection on the back of there, it kind of changed the orientation or the placement of the terminals for that plastic clip. So what I ended up having to do is Dremel out the back side of that clip, then use electrical tape to pretty much make sure it was gonna stay together. And then there is the ground cable. So now it is time to actually see if we have power for the kit and if the kit comes on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the, and it, boop, and there we go. The kit automatically turned on with power. Here's the power switch to turn it off. Power switch to turn it on. Uh, colors right there. Different blinking patterns. All of that good stuff. So now we know we have power. Came on automatically. So this must be good. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get all this put back together. Test power again to make sure nothing came loose. Go from there and then it's gonna be starting to work our way downhill. So another cool thing I just learned about this light kit, watch this, you could already see it right now. I had no idea this was a feature. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, I can't even beatbox, but yes. We have sound synchronization. That shit is hot. Didn't know that kit had it, but now I do. Yo, I did not want to subject you to that, but it was quite the task 
feeding and wiring everything through so i'm gonna briefly go over everything because it would have it would just would have been too much for me to try to film do all this so i apologize but if you have questions leave it in the comment i'll check it and answer as best as possible if not go over to the instagram wolfpack performance and dm me there all right so let's go over this light bars are tucked underneath the dash wired and fed then they come back through and they're wired underneath on the sparkle brackets for the seat so we should have some illumination in the rear mid and up front right on the floorboard so it should be a nice spread depending on how uh bright these leds are and we'll turn all the lights off and get everything in and see how that goes uh so right now i'm gonna find out where i'm gonna place this switch more than likely i'm going to 3m the switch somewhere that's probably going to be temporary with the heat here in georgia so that might not last i might have to find another option honestly i might just tuck it when i need it take it out whatever the case may be so finna find out what i'm gonna do with that right now got the switch wired and mounted in uh, i think i picked a pretty good area pretty much out of the way not very noticeable i shouldn't kick it off uh, my heel should be slightly down further and the wires are tucked i think every now and then until we kind of drive it and get adjusted to see what's going to come out and in we'll see but uh right now there is the switch nice and out the way i'm about to vacuum the floor carpets uh and then i'm going to go ahead and get the cluster in uh that'll probably be a different video and then we'll get everything lit up together that is what we'll do so uh let me get this finished up cleaned up and then we'll go over the lighting try to get it dark in here See how that looks floor is vacuumed cleaned up everything is kind of clean now it is time to go ahead and get the cluster in so that is the end of this video yes if you want to see how everything's going to look together because honestly i want to get the cluster in that came back from wireware miami thanks anthony i want to go ahead open up the cluster get that in get it installed and see everything together and i want you to see everything together so make sure you tune back in next week for the part two of this video get the cluster installed and then see what everything looks like we'll vision out